Hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Let me ask you a question. What would happen if you took Tony Stark from the Marvel Universe and you dropped him into the Game of Thrones universe? Same guy, same mind, same personality, similar backstory, but in a different environment. How do you think he would go? And by the way, this isn't a joke about like his last name being Stark, him part of the Stark family. No, this is just like a, a nerdy thing that I've been wondering about. So I thought, I'm really gonna make a video on this. First, let's consider what his life in Game of Thrones would look like. To keep as much of his backstory as similar as possible, he would have to be of noble birth, from a wealthy family. So he couldn't be a peasant, he couldn't be a soldier's son or something like that. He would have to be of noble birth and wealthy. And also an only child, since Tony is an only child. And I think in many ways the, uh, the only child syndrome is kind of a big part of his personality. That belief that he is the center of the universe. You can't really separate that from who he is. And he would also need to be a character who inherits his family's kingdom at an early age due to his parents being killed when he was young, because that's also a defining characteristic of Tony Stark's character. So perhaps he might be similar to like the Sweet Rob character from the Eerie, you know, a spoiled brat who ends up being Lord of the Vale at a young age since both his parents are dead. But of course, the biggest asset Tony Stark has is his technical genius. His ability to create almost anything from almost anything. If he could build the first Iron Man suit from a box of scraps in a cave, he could probably build some very impressive gadgets with the technology in Game of Thrones. But of course the obvious question then is, in the Game of Thrones universe, since the technology then is kind of on par with medieval times, would Tony Stark's intelligence be put to better use by a study of magic rather than technology? This is an interesting question because on the one hand, magic gives you advantages that you can't get through technology, but it also seems to be somewhat unreliable. I mean, apart from the fire worshippers and the white walkers themselves, magic in Game of Thrones seems to be pretty minor. I know in the books it's different, but I'm not talking about the books, I'm talking about the TV show. So I actually think that Tony, if he were in the Game of Thrones universe, wouldn't even bother with magic. Not just because it doesn't seem reliable, but also because in the Marvel universe magic exists and Tony doesn't seem to be all that interested in it. He doesn't feel the need to add any like magical boosters to his Iron Man suit, so odds are he probably wouldn't bother with magic in Game of Thrones either. Because, as I said, it's somewhat unreliable, and there is some great technological elements in Game of Thrones that he could make use of, such as Valyrian steel. It's super light, it never loses its sharpness, and it's capable of killing White Walkers, and it's even resistant to dragon fire. Valyrian steel. I always wanted some Valyrian steel. Imagine a Valyrian steel Iron Man suit. It would just be a suit of armor, I guess, wouldn't it? Now, of course, there's nowhere near enough Valyrian steel to make a whole suit like that, unless he were able to crack the code in how to forge Valyrian steel. That's lost knowledge in the Game of Thrones universe. No one knows how it was done back then. But let's face it, if there was anyone that could figure that out and crack that code, that kind of thing is right up Tony Stark's alley. I mean, he created a limitless energy source in the first Iron Man. Man movie, which is kind of the modern equivalent of forging Valyrian steel, so why not? His creation of the Iron Man suit in itself is a feat equal to that of forging Valyrian steel. There's also some interesting possibilities that Tony Stark could make use of with wildfire. Mothers, get down! Imagine what kind of explosive weaponry Tony Stark could design utilizing wildfire. With enough of that stuff and an effective enough delivery system, like maybe a really good catapult or something, Stark could basically nuke an entire city without even drawing his sword or commanding a single soldier. And if he's wearing a suit of Valerian steel armor, it'd be really hard to take him down on the battlefield. So Tony Stark's genius and resourcefulness combined with the ingredients that are already in Game of Thrones and him starting out from a rich and powerful family would definitely mean he would make a big impact in the game 
Game of Thrones universe without a doubt. However, him doing the whole Tony Stark invention thing does not guarantee him success in Game of Thrones. Having firepower doesn't guarantee you success because winning the throne and keeping it are two very different things. Firepower will win you the throne, but you can't keep it if you're a terrible leader. Robert Baratheon can attest to that, and so can Danny. Danny has literal firepower with her dragons, and she can barely even get Slaver's Bay under control. In fact, she never really did. I mean, she just nuked the master's ships and then took off. That place is probably broken into like dozens of different factions that are all fighting each other for control of the city now. Everyone is probably cursing Danny for creating all this mess and then running away. And when she conquers Westeros, it'll be the same thing all over again. So firepower alone doesn't guarantee you success. It might guarantee you a military victory in the short term, but not long term success. In fact, I don't think Tony Stark would even last long enough to have a major victory win at all. But more on that in a minute. Tony Stark being smart also does not guarantee him success in Game of Thrones. Tywin is smart. <laughs> Littlefinger was smart. Tyrion is smart, and let's face it, he's kind of been hanging by the skin of his teeth for quite a while now. I mean, if it wasn't for his fan base, he probably would have been bumped off the show a long time ago. Tony Stark being witty and charismatic does not guarantee him success in Game of Thrones either. Oberyn Martell was witty and charismatic. <laughs> Renly Baratheon was witty and charismatic. <laughs> So if Tony's superior firepower, his intelligence and his charisma doesn't guarantee he will succeed, what does? What is the deciding factor of how to survive the Game of Thrones? Well, I think it comes down to just one saying said by Napoleon Bonaparte, and that is hiding your iron fist inside a velvet glove. That ability more than any other seems to be the best predictor of survival and success in Game of Thrones. So let's break it down into its two part, the iron fist and the Velvet Glove. First, you need an Iron Fist, the ability to ruthlessly crush your enemies. But of course, you can't crush your enemies unless you know who your enemies are, and you need to crush your enemies before they try and crush you. All of that's wrapped up in the idea of the Iron Fist. So Ned, Rob, and John, all of them failed to identify their enemies until it was too late. <laughs> Whereas someone like Tyrion, he can identify his enemies, but he lacks the iron fist to crush them. Tyrion knew full well that his enemies were those of his own family, with the exception of Jaime, of course. If he had been willing to use his iron fist, he would have been the one to poison Joffrey, and he would have had a group of cutthroats on standby to rush in and kill his sister and his father, and let's face it, he'd probably have to kill his brother too, in order to take control of Westeros and put an end to the hostilities with the Stark and take over. But he didn't use the iron fist so he ended up in exile. Sure he did eventually kill his dad but it was too late for him to save himself in Westeros. And he's still right now got to deal with Cersei. He's known she was his enemy for a very long time, he should have dealt with her sooner. I'd also put Varys in this same category. He ultimately was outplayed by Littlefinger because he was not willing to get his hands dirty while Littlefinger was. So you must use that iron fist and strike your enemies before they strike you. Secondly, you need to hide that iron fist fist in a velvet glove. What does that mean? It means that while dirty work does need to be done, you should be careful about how it's done and how you look in the doing of it. While in Game of Thrones, violent displays that show everyone not to mess with you are very important, at the same time, you should still maintain an outer appearance of reasonableness of being uh, tough but fair. Someone like Joffrey had no problem with using the iron fist, but he was so over the top with it that he developed a reputation for being a lunatic that was beyond reason, and that is what ultimately killed him. He lacked the velvet glove. Someone like Tywin, on the other hand, did this wonderfully. He wielded the iron fist through attacks like the Red Wedding, which inspired fear and respect, but no one doubted Tywin's reasonableness, his competence. He maintained the velvet glove with everyone except one person. Person. You are an ill-made, spiteful little creature, full of envy, lust, and low cunning. Men's laws give you the right to bear my name and display my colors, since I cannot prove that you are not mine. And to teach
teach me humility the gods have condemned me to watch you waddle about wearing that proud lion that was my father's sigil and his father's before him but neither gods nor men will ever compel me to let you turn castily rock into your whorehouse go now this was Tywood's mistake. Even if he does hate Tyrion, he shouldn't tell him that. He should hide his hatred in a velvet glove. He should pretend like he's accepting of Tyrion until he finds a convenient way of disposing of him. Another person that was good at this was Littlefinger. His moves were violent and ruthless, but his moves were hidden, and he always maintained an outward appearance of reasonableness. But much like Tywin, he failed to do this with one key person, and it cost him his life. Someone who had no consideration for hiding the iron and fist was Stannis. If he had not burned his child in front of the whole army, his army would not have deserted him, and he would have gone into that attack on Winterfell with a full army and most likely won. I mean, if the Knights of the Vale could win the battle later on, I mean, Stannis had his own knights, he could have won very easily then, especially with all the battlefield experience that Stannis has. I mean, if he really felt that it was necessary to sacrifice his child in order to win the battle, he should have hidden that in his velvet glove. He should have done it in private away from the army so that nobody was freaked out by him. I mean, when you think about it, he probably even could have won the Battle of Blackwater for the capital if he had hidden that iron fist more, maybe recruited Littlefinger to open the gates for them. When you march on King's Landing, you may find yourself facing a protracted siege or open gates. But oh no, Mr. Iron Fist Stannis has to charge the gates and smash them down old school style. In fact, when it comes to who is the best at playing the Game of Thrones by this standard, Tywin is undoubtedly the best player. But now that he's gone, we might actually have a new contender with Cersei Lannister. Now, yes, I know, pretty much all of her schemes in all the other seasons failed, but recently it does seem that she's actually learned from her mistakes and she's gotten smarter. While she made a total mess out of her plan to try to use the sparrows to take out her rival Marjorie, ending with her walk of shame, who was it that had the last laugh? Marjorie had the silk glove down pat, and Alina Tyrell's willingness to poison Joffrey showed that she had the iron fist, so together they're a powerful combination, but Cersei defeated them both and took out the entire Sparrow Order. And seeing how she has more recently handled herself with Danny, I gotta say, I'm impressed. She knows exactly who her enemy is. It's Danny. It's not the Night King. It's Danny. And she did successfully hide her iron fist behind a velvet glove by pretending to be convinced to go along with their plan, fooling everybody, even her own brother Jamie. I'm telling you, Cersei's power level has jumped up a notch. I think she is now actually the number one player. She's the one to beat. She's always been ruthless, but she's been kind of dumb, but now she's gotten smarter. So the point of all this is, what matters in Game of Thrones is not firepower, not charisma, not intelligence, but this. So the question is, how does Tony Stark measure up by this standard? And the answer is terribly. I think if Tony Stark was in Game of Thrones, he wouldn't even last one season. I mean, considering how many people that he kills in all of his movies, he obviously has no problem with the Iron Fist part, but he fails to know who his enemies are. Whether it's a guy who's been by his side his whole life, whether it's a rival businessman, or even just being able to predict whether his allies might turn on him or not. He has no capacity to identify his enemies in time and he only survives because in the Marvel Universe you get a second chance there are no second chances in the Game of Thrones universe well usually there aren't I imagine if Tony Stark was in Game of Thrones he'd end up kind of like Ranley Baratheon he'd start out with a good following due to his name and his charisma but he'd be cut down very early on because of someone close to him betraying him using the Iron Fist in a way that he didn't expect Tony Stark's also not very good at hiding the Iron Fist in the Velvet Glove. I mean, if he had just kept his identity as Iron Man secret from the get-go, he would have almost no problems after the first movie because nobody would know who Iron Man even is. I am Iron Man. <laughs> So yes, as impressive as Tony Stark might be in the Marvel Universe, I think in the Game of Thrones Universe, he would be killed off very quickly. 
So guys, I hope you enjoyed this. This is the first uh, video like this that I've uh, tried to do. I'm thinking maybe I could do this for more. Like I was thinking about what if I did one of, what if Harry Potter was in the Lord of the Rings universe? How would he go there? Yeah, if, if you guys would like to see that or if you can think of other good uh, what if videos like this of taking a character from one movie universe or TV universe and putting them in another one, put it in the comment section below. I'd love to hear about it. So I am Bandit. This is Bandit Incorporated. Until next time, I will see you guys in the comments.